The semiconductor diode, or simply diode, is the most basic element of semiconductor circuit technology. Many other semiconductor components, such as bipolar transistors and MOSFETs, are based on its principles. Understanding the diode as a component and in its applications is the first step to understanding more complex transistor circuits. But diodes do not only have their place as the base for the more powerful transistors. They are also very important components for protection against overvoltage, reverse polarity or in rectifier circuits because they allow current to pass only in one direction. So let's take a closer look at the basics of diodes. As already mentioned, the diode is a semiconductor device, so it is made of a semiconductor material. Often used materials are for example silicon and germanium. Silicon diodes are considered to be the most common diodes, so we will look at them first. A silicon diode is made of an N-silicon area and a P-silicon area which are lined up next to each other. This is called a PN junction. You can find more information about PN junctions in the video description. For now, you only need to know that by recombination of the charge carriers in the semiconductor, a depletion region is created between the two areas. If a positive voltage is applied between the P area and the N area of the diode, the depletion region between the two areas becomes smaller. When the applied voltage reaches a certain threshold value, namely the threshold voltage, current can flow from the positive to the negative side of the diode. If the applied voltage is reversed, in other words, if a negative voltage is applied between the P and the N area, the depletion region between the two areas widens. Thus, charge carriers cannot pass and there is no current flow. This basic function of the silicon diode is also indicated in its circuit symbol. It consists of a triangle with a tip pointing in the direction in which current can flow and a vertical line indicating the direction in which the diode blocks. The terminals of a diode are called anode and cathode, with the anode being the P area side and the cathode being the N area side. You can easily remember where the terminals are located by looking at the circuit symbol. If you look at the symbol from the side of the N node, you can see an A. From the other side, where the cathode is, you can see a K. With this hint, it should never be a problem to assign the terminals of a diode correctly. But let's get back to what we are really interested in, the function of a diode. If a positive voltage is applied to a diode from the anode to the cathode and the current through the diode is measured, it appears that very little current flows at voltages below the threshold voltage. But after a voltage greater than the threshold voltage is applied, the current through the diode begins to increase exponentially, with the voltage drop of the diode remaining in the range of the threshold voltage. This threshold voltage of a silicon diode is about 0.6 to 0.7 volts. The exact value can be found in its datasheet. If you draw this relationship between current and voltage of a diode in a diagram, you get the characteristic curve of a diode in forward direction. The area before the threshold voltage is reached and thus the diode really begins to conduct is called the blocking area. The region after the threshold voltage is called the conducting region, since the diode conducts here, meaning it lets current flow. But what happens when the diode is operated in the reverse direction? So far I have told you that the diode does not conduct in reverse direction. Actually, this is not quite true, because if a very high voltage is applied in reverse direction, a breakdown will occur. If this happens, current can also flow in the reverse direction. With silicon diodes, however, a breakdown means that the diode is destroyed, and of course we don't want that. But there are special diodes which use this breakdown for the better. We will briefly discuss them later in this video. The characteristic curve of a diode can also be described mathematically. The Shockley equation is used for this purpose. As expected, 
due to the exponential shape of the characteristic curve in forward direction, an E function is present in this equation. Furthermore, the forward voltage, temperature voltage and reverse current are included. The forward voltage is the voltage applied to the diode. The reverse current is the already mentioned small current that flows even if the diode is operated in the blocking region. The temperature voltage can be calculated using the elementary charge, Boltzmann constant and temperature. The fact that the temperature plays a role in this formula already lets us assume that the diode is a temperature dependent component. Indeed, the forward current through a diode at constant voltage increases with its temperature. In addition, the reverse current is also temperature dependent and, just like the forward current, also increases with temperature. This technique is sometimes used in microchips to measure their internal temperature. So far, we have mainly looked at the basic function of silicon diodes. However, I have already brought up that there are also other diodes such as set diodes or LEDs available. To finish, I would like to briefly introduce you to a selection of some other very useful types of diodes. First, let's have a look at the already mentioned set diode. The main difference to the silicon diode is that the set diode is designed for operation in the breakdown range. This can also be seen from its circuit symbol. The additional line here symbolizes the breakdown region. In forward direction, the set diode works the same way as a silicon diode. But in practice, the set diode is most often operated in reverse direction, where it can be used for voltage stabilization or limiting, as well as overload protection. Another type of diode that you surely know are light-emitting diodes, or short LEDs. As their name suggests, these diodes light up when a voltage greater than a threshold voltage is applied. This lighting is indicated in a corresponding circuit symbol by two arrows pointing outwards. LEDs come in many different colors and they have different threshold voltages depending on their color. In principle, these diodes function in the same way as silicon diodes do. Only the material used and the corresponding threshold voltages are different. Last but not least, I would like to briefly introduce the Schottky diode to you. This type of diode can be found in applications where low forward voltage drop is required because its threshold voltage is lower than the one of a silicon diode. The biggest difference to silicon diodes, however, is the structure of a Schottky diode. In contrast to a silicon diode, it does not consist of a semiconductor-semiconductor junction, but of a metal-semiconductor junction, which leads to the mentioned lower threshold voltage. But the big disadvantage of Schottky diodes is their rather large reverse current. To summarize, diodes are semiconductor devices that allow current to flow in one direction and generally block it in the other direction. There are many different types of diodes, whereby all have different characteristics, which make them suitable for their respective application. I'm Clara with the Institute of Electronics. I hope you have learned something today, but anyways, thanks for watching. For the interested viewer, we highly recommend The Art of Electronics by Horowitz and Hill and for our German-speaking viewers, Elektronische Schaltungstechnik, written by members of our institute.